A vast amount of stimuli constantly bombards us. But how does our brain detect the information that is relevant for survival and communication? Something that brings even the highly complex human brain to its limits should be almost impossible for animals with simpler nervous systems, such as the locust. So how do they manage to separate the important from the irrelevant? How stimuli are processed in very simple neuronal networks is investigated by scientists of the Humboldt Universität and the Bernstein Center Computational Neuroscience in Berlin. Wie kann ein solch kleines Gehirn diese Reize aufnehmen und wie kann sie sie in Form von elektrischer Aktivität repräsentieren, die Informationen in diesen Reizen und wie kann sie sie über verschiedene Nervenzellen verteilen? For this purpose, a team around biophysicist Susanna Schreiber and the behavioral biologist Sandra Wolgemuth and Bert Ronacker examines the auditory system of different species of grasshoppers. They use behavioral studies, activity measurements of nerve cells and theoretical models. Males of many species of grasshoppers attract the females with a specific song. This often differs just slightly from the song of other species, and only if the females detect subtle differences can they then find the correct male. To investigate the cellular basis of sound detection, the researchers use relatively large species, such as big migratory locusts. The ears are located behind the last pair of legs of the animals. Receptor cells translate the sound waves into electrical impulses, action potentials. These are processed in two further stages and sent to the brain, yet only 200 cells are involved in this process. The question of how information is encoded in such a simple network fascinates the researchers. In locusts, this can be very easily investigated. Also the Vorteile dieses Heuschreckensystems bestehen in erster Linie darin, dass es sich ähm, um eine sehr kleine, begrenzte Zahl an Nervenzellen handelt dabei, die miteinander verschaltet sind und ähm, die sich individuell identifizieren lassen und auch wiederfinden lassen. Und man kann also die Antwort, die neuronale Antwort dieser Nervenzellen ähm, darstellen und beschreiben und sie gleichzeitig auch sehr schön in einen Verhaltenskontext setzen. In order to interpret the cellular activity correctly, researchers must understand how information is encoded. One form is the so-called sparse coding, which means coding by sparse activity. Depending on the incoming stimulus in each case, only a few different cells are activated. This coding form was previously known only for very large networks, such as the human visual system. Now PhD student Jan Clemens examines on the basis of Sandra Wolgemuth's data whether this principle can also be found in the auditory system of the locust. Die Vorteile davon sind, dass man möglichst viel Informationen mit relativ wenig Aktivität, also Aktionspotenzialen und damit Energie weiterleitet. Ein spärlicher Code ist sehr robust gegenüber Rauschen. Und hinzu kommt noch, dass eine spärliche Codierung auch die Weiterverarbeitung von Informationen erleichtert. Previously it was assumed that sparse coding only works when various stimuli are conducted on completely different paths through the network a so-called labeled line. But the data surprised the scientists. The receptors respond to many different stimuli, and the information's path through the network is not as clear as expected. Therefore, Jan Clemens fits a new model to the data. Although in this case, all receptors respond to all stimuli, sparse coding and a labeled line can develop. In unserem Fall ist es so, dass die Eingänge in das Nervensystem sehr unspezifisch sind und diese äh, Selektivität erst im, im Ausgang des Netzwerkes generiert wird. The researchers assume that this is the result of excitatory and inhibitory interconnections. Sparse coding can indeed take place in very simple networks and the animals can benefit from its advantages such as energy efficiency and simplicity of processing. Thus, the researchers have opened a door to new questions. Der nächste große Schritt ist, dass nachdem wir jetzt verstanden haben, wie die Verarbeitung im peripheren Nervensystem funktioniert, wir gerne wissen möchten, wie geht es dann weiter im Gehirn. Und wir möchten darüber hinaus verstehen, ob dieses sehr effiziente Prinzip so grundsätzlich ist, dass wir es auch in anderen Tierarten, in anderen sensorischen Systemen wiederfinden. So even if the nervous systems of locusts is far less complex than that of the human brain, the tasks are often the same. 
and sometimes too are the principles by which they are solved.